So you're thinking to come and live here in Turkey, are you? Well, there's a few things that you might want to know before you book your flight. From the huge response and comments that we've had from our last films that we did, buying property and renting property in Turkey, it's quite obvious that you're all thinking of coming here to live and retire here. But many of you have got no idea of how to actually do that and whether or not it's even feasible. So in this film, we're going to give you some tips and information on how we can make it happen for you. If you want to live here in Turkey long term, you'll need to apply for your residence permit or what the Turks call ikamet or otome izni. And for that, you need to fulfill certain criteria. You'll need to show an income or pension. You'll need a medical insurance to cover you for the period. You'll also need to own your own property or have an official rental contract on a property or a hotel room. Usually they'll grant a short-term residence permit if you're coming here to study, if you need medical treatment in a government hospital or a private hospital, if you're starting a business over here, or if you're just coming over here for tourism or travel. But be aware, a residence permit does not give you permission to work. A work permit is a separate application. If you're thinking to buy or rent here, we suggest that you first decide where you want to live here and look at the properties for rent and for sale on the internet for those areas, within your budget of course. If you've got friends or family here, they can give you a lot of information on where the best places are to buy. And be aware that some places look lovely in the summertime but they might be very quiet in the winter time or even deserted. In most cases, you have the right to enter Turkey for 90 days within a six month period. That depends on your nationality, of course, and what passport you hold. You'll need to check this before you depart. When you're here in Turkey, you need to start your application before your 90 days is up, otherwise, you'll be fined and possibly deported. To apply for your residency, you will need proof that you have somewhere to live here in Turkey. So you will need the deed of the property that is in your name that you've bought or an official rental contract. If the deed is only in your partner's name, he or she will need to certify that you will be living at the property with them. You'll need to show an income, of course, of any earnings you receive on a regular basis or proof of your retirement pension. And you'll also need a policy, a private policy of health insurance to cover the period that you're applying for, usually two years. As you can see, to make an application, there's quite a bit of paperwork involved. So for the initial application, you go to the government website. There's a link in my description below, and it should look like this. Just fill in the form and follow the instructions. If you're under 65 and over 18, you will have to click the box to say that you've got private health insurance, even if you haven't applied for it yet. You can get that insurance over in Turkey or you can get it online. There's a lot of online companies that do this whole process for you, but be very careful because some of them charge very high fees follow the instructions and eventually they'll give you an interview 
in Turkey that you have to go to and the offices where the interviews are are in different areas depending on where you're going to live or rent. It's a good idea to go to where your interview is going to be a few days before and ask them if you've got all the paperwork that you're going to need. We went there a few days before and we found that we were missing a couple of documents. So don't, don't expect there not to be any hiccups in this whole system because we've come to the Tapu office, that's uh, where the, reg the house is registered and uh, there's a little bit of paperwork to do there and you, when you get the paper you have to pay a fee of 14 lira which is about two pound but they don't have a cashier in the Tapu office so you have to go out and find a place, either a PTT, which is a post office, all right, or we did try paying at a, a bank, but they want at a, at a bank of matic which they suggested. But unfortunately, the bank of matic want your Kimlik number, which is your your ID card number. Well, of course, as a foreigner, you don't have one of those, and they're also always asking for a for a Turkish telephone number, which we don't have either. So. It's, uh, there is a little bit of a hiccup in the system here, but you'll get round it. So we're at the tax office now. The tax office, there's two payments to be, to be made. One is the processing payment uh, for the tax office to do it. And the other payment is for the actual um, Ikan Metka. Okay, so, and of course, if there's two of you, it's double the amount. Which came to, what was it, 964 lira? Each. Each. Yeah. Plus, um, yeah. Yeah. But well, we did come across a little problem, and that was with Trudy's name because before we were married, her maiden name was still written down at the tax office and not a new name. So we've had to process it in her old name, and apparently the the uh, immigration office will sort it out. So that's progress. <laughs> So for insurance, you can either go to an agency like we have, or you can do it online. If you're over 65, you don't need a private insurance policy to make your application for residency. But it might be a good idea to get a policy anyway before you come here, just to cover you for the period of your residency. If you're over 65 and you've been living here with your residence permit for a while, you can apply for SGK health insurance or GSS insurance. These are government schemes, the Turkish government schemes, which are a bit like the National Health Service. But the application is really complicated and so I would really recommend that you go and speak to advisors about how you apply for that. Thank you so much. So the fee for the nutter for two people, for both of us, is 400 lira, which is about 50 pounds roughly. And it's quite interesting that the guy that does the translation for you actually gives you a lot of information because they have to do this sort of thing all the time. These, these nutter, they used to be absolutely packed years ago, you couldn't get in them. But now a lot of the stuff has been computerised, so it's a lot easier. And the other thing is that everyone used to smoke in these little offices and when you open the door the smoke used to come out as if it was on fire. But smoking is now banned in all government buildings, it has been for a few years. And last but not least, you go to your booked appointment which will be in a government office like this one. And a few weeks later, hopefully they will send you your residency card which comes by a cargo and you have to go and pick it up. This might all sound a bit daunting, so if you're not a native speaker, we highly recommend that you pay an advisor translator to deal with the whole process for you. So we went to see Jakob, who does just that. So this is Jakob, who does, he's an official translator. Uh, so what do you charge for this complete service? Uh -huh. I charge 350 lira 
a person if they apply first time ever yeah. or 300 euro for the renewal application. And that, so that's about £35 at the moment with the English yeah, exchange is. rate, isn't it? And what, do you actually go to the offices? Do they have to go with you? Yes, I go with my clients to the immigration office during the interview. I'll support them until yeah. the job's done. And obviously they have to pay for the health insurance if the applicant is oh, yeah. under 65 years old. You, you can organise the health yes, I insurance, do actually, can't everything. you? Uh -huh. With the SGK or... Or I different have different policies. I do organise everything. Uh -huh. That's great. Yeah. All right. Brilliant, mate. Thank but you. Thanks Thank for you your help. So there you go. So, <laughs> if you want the easy life, go and see an, a translator or an advisor like Jakob, mm -hmm. and his details are in my description below. So I hope that's given you enough information to start the process off. Give us a thumbs up on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And please hit the notification bell so you don't miss our future films. Thanks for watching.